Welcome back to Briggs on Books. Are you looking for your next book that you're going to read? Look at this book. We're going to talk about it. Oh, and by the way, I have the author of the book on the show today as well. White Glass is the book, and the author is uh, Nova Wallace. Welcome, Nova. Hello, Sean. How are you today? Tell our viewers where you are. I am all the way in Lansing, Michigan. Wow. And... Uh, uh, White glass, I don't want to give too much of it away, but it sounds like it could be a true story. Girl meets a guy online, which happens now, right? And she travels to another city to, to meet up with him and be with him. Tell us, uh, Nova, about the uh, book White Glass. Okay, so White Glass is definitely my award-winning masterpiece, and it follows the life of Sandra Rose. And Sandra Rose is a young woman who is dealing with some dark issues in her past. And she meets a young man online thinking that it's going to be the beginning of a new life for her. But she soon finds out that he's not who he says he is. So she's getting ready to make some choices in this relationship when she comes in contact with a student because she gets a job as mm -hmm. a teacher in Nashville. And this student is so powerful and impactful in her life that she decides to risk it all and help him. Hmm. Uh, and uh, the student's about, what, eighth grade or something like that? Yes, he is a 16-year-old trapped in the eighth grade. I mean, what so, could go wrong, right? 16-year-old eighth grader, what could go wrong? <laughs> but it gets right. a little bumpy, I guess. Yes. And, and I wrote that to talk about, you know, there's been issues in the school system for a very long time. We did no child left behind. And it still seems like a lot of children are being left behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I thought about it and I said, you know, what will it take to help some of these kids out here? Mm -hmm. And that's when I came up with the dynamic between Sandra and Dimitri and how she risked her life. Yeah to give him a better future. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, that part of the story is very exciting. And uh, um, I mean, how do we reach these kids? Well, here's somebody who did it. I love strong women stories, by the way, too. So um, women doing the, the right thing. Now, this book, I'm always looking for my next book. And people always say, well, awards, so what if it? Well, the awards helped me pick the book. I see that sticker right on the cover. I said, okay, uh, somebody's recognized this book, so I'm going to choose that as my next one. There's a million books out there, so congratulations on the uh, award, by the way. But I do want to say, I do want to make the point that this is not your first book, uh, but you also had Bipolar Bears, which is a very clever title, by the way. Tell us a little bit about that book. Well, I'm a mental health advocate myself. And I have been struggling with mental health issues since I was 30. And I wanted to write a book that deals with mental illness without it being from the standpoint of a doctor or a therapist, mm -hmm. which is a lot of books out there are from that perspective. And that's great. I've read mental health books um, from therapy therapists and, and professionals in the business. But I felt like sometimes it isolates people. You feel like you can't relate, that this is a person who's not really going through it. This is someone who's observing. Mm -hmm. So I wrote by Polar Bears to talk about mental illness in everyone community and our community, it just Americans, whoever, whoever is struggling for mental health, it's very fast paced. It's very exciting mm -hmm. and it's, it's not a clinical, run-of-the-mill book on mental illness. Um, by the way, I want to get back to this uh, book we're here to talk about today, White Glass. Um, would you call it a romance? What, what, what's a genre? Can you put it into a genre? I would call it contemporary fiction. Okay. Yes. Contemporary fiction. And who's going to read it? Everyone. Everyone. It's okay for everyone. It's, Good. It's now. It's not for children. Uh, um, none of my books are. I don't. I, not, so far, none of my books have been aimed at children. It's for a mature audience, eighteen and up. And I wrote it with diverse characters, mm -hmm. very diverse characters. 
because I want everyone to feel like they're represented in this story. And that's kind of how I write everything. I want everyone to, yeah. to read my books and to say, hey, I found a character in there that's just like myself or somebody that I know. So it's, it's just for everyone. Well, I see a lot of people in there already that, you know, I know, I, I know these people, people getting out of prison, people picking up, moving to another city, chasing a boy that they don't even know. You know, I know these people in real life. So uh, I think it's going to be relatable to a lot of people. And uh, I think it's going to be an exciting book. Uh, don't give away the end, but I think a lot happens in this book. It, it does. The whole way through, it's, it, it's very fast paced and there's a lot of life lessons in it. Yeah. So like it. you can read White Glass and you can learn something about yourself mm -hmm. and maybe people that you didn't know you, you, you would relate to, you know, someone with a dark past. Mm -hmm. But I, I wanted to write these characters to be... I don't, I don't ever want anybody to feel sorry for any of my characters, but I definitely wanted people to read, read about Sandra and to say, okay, you know, this is someone that I would remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, uh, by the way, we have your web address on the screen. What would our viewers find if they go to your website? Everything. So you can find all three of my books my memoir, which is Finally Unrestricted, by Polar Bears and White Glass. I also sell mental health apparel, so you can find t-shirts, bags with my um, mental health slogans on them, and get the word out about mental illness and awareness that you should not let any diagnosis you have stop you from doing what you want to do in life, and I want to be a testament to that. You know, I, I have bipolar 2 and schizophrenia. Those are very difficult yeah. diagnoses to have and to deal with every day, but yet I do it. Uh, some of these mental health issues used to have such a stigma attached, but now people are talking about them. And, and I want to put bipolar bears up again because uh, people think they're the only ones going through this, but reading a book like this, they can say, oh, it's not just me. There's other people out there as, as, as well. One of my shirts says, you are not alone. Asking mm, for help nice. is the first step. I want everybody to realize that even if you're on the most severe spectrum of mental health, where you're hearing voices and yeah. you're seeing things and you're really having a difficult time in your life at that moment, just to know that I've been there and I've overcome and you're not alone. There are other people out here who are suffering I also have information to uh, support groups, NAMBI on my site. Mm -hmm. So ask for help. Get on the um, suicide hotline if you're feeling like you need someone to talk to. Yeah. Read a book, read Bipolar Bears, and just sort of escape your mind for a little while. Read Black Glass, which I think has a lot of very funny moments and hilarious moments. There's a lot of interaction between the children. I think that that resonates as far as bringing in a younger audience too. If these are not just older characters that you see. These are characters of all ages. How about uh, people, I'm just thinking, who? I always ask the question, who should read this book? And you gave the great answer, everybody should read it. But people who have not been exposed to the mental illness or they have a friend of a friend who has some mental illness and they don't understand it, uh, do you think this could bring them, give them a better understanding and acceptance? Of course. Bipolar and bears? That's, yeah. that's why I wrote it. I before I had my nervous breakdown and my diagnosis, I've dealt with mental ill mentally ill people mm -hmm. and I did not know how to interact with them or how to treat them because when you hear about someone being mentally ill, you sort of stigmatize them. Mm -hmm. And even though I had a mother, my mother struggled with mental ill health issues as well, comes from her side of the family. Um I I was still naive about it until yeah. I had to go through it personally. And so when I went through it personally, I just said, I want to help others. So if you don't know anything, like, oh, you know, I get that all the time when I'm out. I do vending shows and I sell my books to people. And they say, I don't know anything about bipolar. I don't know anything about mental illness. And I'm like, that's okay. 
this book will help you understand it and feel more attached to the people that have it, not so much looking at someone through a window. Again, here's a cover to Bipolar Bears. And uh, uh, we weren't even here to talk about that when I asked, hey, Nova, can I put that one up on the screen too? She said, sure. White glass is what we're here to talk about. And, and we're about out of time, Nova, but any last thoughts on the book or uh, about yourself or anything in the world you want to talk about? Now's your chance. Well, I want to tell everybody, go check out White Glass. It's a, it's a great, fast-paced book that will teach you a lot. It has a lot of insights on inner-city children, school children, our school system, teaching, and everyone loves to talk about love and yes, relationships. They do. They do. Now, I guess it's uh, you can find the book in all the usual places? Right now, you can pick white glass up online at Amazon mm -hmm. or you can also check it out it's available for sale on my website www.novawallace.com no, well, oh, I, if I could buy it direct from the author I always love to do that uh, by the way both these books you guys go order them but don't click once order five of them and give them away to friends I always have to go to someone's house for dinner or something I like to take a, a gift and I take a book along so uh, never just order one book and let's uh, support the authors uh, so they can keep doing this great work um, thank you Nova I just want to say uh, I didn't put your uh, other book up I didn't see the cover but it is a uh, memoir yes finally unrestricted nice and it is about, I sued my brother on the Judge Joe Brown show. Uh -huh. What happens next? Okay. Uh, I can't wait for that. Thank you, Nova. And I hope you'll come on the show again. Always. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. You have a great day. And for our viewers, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more authors. Welcome back to Briggs on Books Hour, truly international to Briggs on Books Hour, truly international talk show where we talk to authors from all over the world about their book, about their process, where they even come up with their ideas. So we talk to publishers, editors, paginators. If you knew, if you write a book, you got to get a paginator to make a line up right on all the pages. There's all these things that go into creating books. Uh, we like to talk to authors, and we also like to talk to people who are in the process of going through this muck, trying to figure it all out. Um, it's one thing to write a book, uh, but to get it written, get it published, get it out there and promoted, there's so many steps. So we like to have a lot of authors on who tell us just that, how did you do it? And also we talk to people who help get authors published. There's so many steps that uh, uh, many aspiring authors don't know about yet, but you're gonna find out as you go through this. But there's people who can help you get through the steps of getting your book published. And by the way, we've been doing this since 2008 and our YouTube just passed 1 million views. So we're very excited about that. I just want to say that Briggs on Books, <laughs> I just think it's terrific. Thank you. Um, all of us who write 